Now we're about to hear a brand new message from Angela entitled The Fight. So go ahead and grab your boxing gloves and let's get ready to receive from the Lord. Round one. I wanted to talk to you today about the fight. I don't believe there is one person watching today online by any other means even later on that won't realize that we as a country, we as a world have been in a battle for the last while. COVID-19 has turned our lifestyles upside down. Health and well-being has attacked, been attacked. Our finances have been messed with. Jobs have been thrown into jeopardy. The economy is under threat. And you know what? Even some of our simplest pleasures, like just going for a cup of coffee with a friend, has been curtailed. It's been inconvenient. It's been disruptive. And you know, it's caused uncertainty and fear, unfortunately. It has challenged our very freedom and it has unfortunately had too many casualties. It has threatened us, it has challenged us, it has threatened our way of life. But you know, church, we have hope. We have hope. You know, just before Easter, Enda came out of a series on benefits. Benefits, once we serve God, we have benefits, amen. We can bask in the benefits of God, like hope, peace, joy and so much more so much more but you know what it's not always easy when we're in the midst of a battle it's not always easy and that's why I wanted to talk to you today about the fight we can win this the victory is ours and you know there's a verse in the bible John 10:10, 10, 10, and if you've been around church settings you're going to know this verse John 10:10 10, 10 says the devil comes to kill to steal and to destroy church our enemy is very real Unfortunately, he is very real and his only plan is to come and kill, steal and destroy our lives. He wants to mess with you. He wants to mess with me. He wants to mess with your family. He wants to mess with our lives. Amen. But God is so faithful because I love it because in this verse, this very same verse, without missing a beast, Jesus tells us, John 10:10, 10, 10, the thief does not come except to steal, to kill and to destroy. But I have come, Jesus has come, that we may have life and have it more abundantly. Wow, praise God. The enemy comes, yes, to kill, to steal and destroy. But Jesus comes to give us life. He came to give us life. He came to give us life and not just any life. Not just any life, abundant life. Life to the full, life to the Pepsi Max, amen. It's important to remember that although we live under the constant threat of an enemy, we can still have the benefit of peace. We can still have the benefit of joy. We can still have the benefit of hope in our hearts. Amen. God is faithful. Amen. But the thing about it is, it's not easy. When you're in the middle of a battle, let's face it and let's be honest, it's not easy. Amen. It's not the easiest thing to stay calm when you're on the battlefield. It's not easy to be a ray of sunshine to everyone around you when you're in the battle. When you're in the middle of a fight, that's exactly it. You're in the middle of a fight. Then a soldier in the middle of a battlefield, when he's tired, he's afraid, there's gunfire all around him, there's bullets zipping by his head, he's not usually in the mood to tell jokes, amen? Let's face it, the battlefield is not Disneyland. It's not the happiest place on earth. The battlefield is hard, it's messy, it's tiring, it's painful. And when you're in a fight, it's hard to see the light. But I assure you today, if you're a child of God, the light is still shining. The light is still there. The victory is yours. The victory is mine. We have been equipped to win this fight. But how? How am I equipped, Angela? How do I fight? How do I make sure that after all this, when all this mess dies down in 2020, how can I be sure that I'll be still standing? Well, you know what? The first thing a good soldier does when he goes into battle is he needs to know what his weapons are and how to use them. And the first one is to be vigilant. We need to be vigilant. You know, a soldier on the battlefield is always vigilant. He may be under pressure, he may be bogged down, but the one thing that he always is, is vigilant. He is constantly watching and looking over his shoulder. You know, a boxer in the ring, a boxer in the ring will never turn his back on his opponent. He will always have his gloves up, ready to stop the next punch. He is vigilant and we need to be vigilant. 1 Peter 5 and verse 8 says, be sober. 
Be vigilant because your adversary, 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 the devil, walks around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. By burying our heads in the sand won't make the enemy go away, church, unfortunately. And you know what? It's so easy in fighting times to get discouraged. In the lockdown days that we've had, we can feel isolated, we can feel excluded from the world. And it's so easy in those days to become disconnected to church and disconnected to people all around us. You know, and the Bible says in this verse, the devil is described like a roaring lion. You know, when lions hunt, they look for weak, young, isolated, unguarded animals. Why? They're easy to pick out, amen? They're easy to take down. So we need always to be vigilant. We need to keep ourselves connected. We need to be in church whenever the doors are open. And when it's not physically possible, like in recent times, to be physically in church, we need to be connected online. We should never miss an opportunity to connect with church online because we need to be vigilant. You know, when you're not under a church covering, you become, you become isolated, you become weak, you become unguarded and you become easy pickings for the enemy. You know, bananas on a bunch stay much fresher, much longer than a banana that's been removed from the bunch. We need to fight. So we need to be vigilant. We need to be prepared also. And I love this one because when I was a child, I was in the Girl Guides for years, and the motto of the Girl Guides then anyway was, be prepared. And that was grounded into us week after week, be prepared. Be prepared. And even to this day, I drive in the crazy because I'm always wanting to be prepared. I'm always wanting to be a step ahead. If when we go to do something or we go somewhere, I'm always like, what if we need to bring this? Maybe we should bring this. Maybe we should do this just in case this doesn't work out. And you know what? When the girls were small as well, whenever we went away somewhere, I always brought everything they needed and more just in case. I always felt I needed to be prepared because what if, what if I get caught out? We need to be prepared when we're in the battle in these days that we're in, when we face challenges that we face in life, we need to be prepared. We need to be prepared, but how can we be prepared? How can we as Christians be prepared? We know the word of God. Hebrews 4.12 says, for the word of God is living and active sharper than any two-edged sword. Wow. Sharper than any two-edged sword. You know, when we know the word of God, we are such an advantage in the battle. When we know the scriptures, we can fight off the advances of the enemy. When we have our scriptures ready, we can answer the enemy back when he tries to attack us. Like, no weapon formed or fashioned against me shall prosper. And in these days, Psalm 91 verse 7 is a good one. A thousand may fall at my side, ten thousand at my right hand, but it will not come near me. Verse 9 says, Because I have made the Lord my dwelling place and the Most High my refuge, no evil shall be allowed to befall me and no plague shall come near my home. For he will command his angels concerning me to guard me in all my ways. Sharper than any two-edged sword. A two-edged sword is an effective weapon. A two-edged sword doesn't take any prisoners. A two-edged sword is a worthy weapon to have. You know what? Sometimes we get bogged down and we think, I need to know the Bible. I need to know the Bible. I need to know the Bible from cover to cover. No, you do not. But you do need to know scriptures. You need to find some scriptures in there that speak to you, that you understand, that you can relate to, and you need to know them off by heart. You may not know exactly where they are in the Bible, but that's okay. Know the word, amen. Get some scriptures there because you are at a huge advantage when the enemy attacks once you know your words. We need to fight. We need to fight. We need to face every challenge head on because if we ignore it, we'll be defeated, amen. So we need to be vigilant. We need to be prepared and we need to know who we are. You need to know, church, who you are. In this battle, you need to know and you need to remember that you are a child of the Most High God. You know when a flight attendant, when you're on the flight and the flight, the flight attendant settles everything down and then they start to give you the safety, the safety uh, instructions, you know, what to do in a crash situation. I know I was always a terror for just sitting in there and not listening to them. Ugh. They're too complicated. And I'd always say to myself, it's okay, because Enda will know what to do. 
And one day I was really convicted about that. I thought, wow, that's not right. I need to know for myself what to do in the event of an accident. I need to know myself. And that's the way it is with us. We can't rely on our spouse to know or our, another family member to know or a friend to know. We need to know ourselves. We need to be vigilant. We need to be prepared. We need to know the word of God. And we need to know who we are. Amen. And just like a flight attendant teaches us how to survive in the event of a crash situation God teaches us in his word how to survive when trouble hits but unfortunately as the flight attendant says in the unlikely event of loss of cabin pressure God gives us instructions in the likely event of an attack because he tells us in his word he is so faithful he tells us in his word in John 16 33 in this world you will have trouble but take heart for I have overcome the world you know, not only does a soldier when he goes into battle have his weapons, but he needs to know how to use them. And he needs to have confidence in his weapons and in his ability to use them. You need to have confidence that God has given you weapons. And you need to have confidence that you are capable of using these because he has given you the authority to use these. Acts 19 and verse 11, just look over there with me for a minute. Now God worked unusual miracles by the hands of Paul so that even handkerchiefs or aprons were brought from his body to the sick, and the diseases left them, and the evil spirits went out of them. Praise God. Wow. Verse 13, Then some of the itinerant Jewish exorcists took it upon themselves to call the name of the Lord Jesus over those who had evil spirits, saying, We exorcise you by the Jesus whom Paul preaches. Whoops. Also, there were seven sons of Sceva, a Jewish priest, who did so. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus, I know, and Paul, I know, but who are you? Then the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them, overpowered them and prevailed against them so that they fled out of that house naked and wounded. Guys, if we don't know who we are, if we don't have confidence in whose authority we walk in, then the enemy will take us out because you see, he does know whose authority we walk in. But he also knows when we don't know whose authority we walk in. The sons of Sceva saw Paul having access to, to all this power and he was casting out demons and he was healing the sick. And they thought, ah, sure, we could do that. We'll just copy what he does. And they did. But the problem was that they didn't have that relationship with God. They didn't know God like Paul did. And you know, it fell flat because the, Paul, the demons said, Jesus, I know, and Paul, I know. The demons even knew Paul. Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. But who are you? I don't know you. Why? Because the demons knew exactly what was happening here. They knew that they were just trying to do and replicate what Paul was doing. But they didn't have the confidence in it that Paul did. They didn't have the assurance in it that Paul did. The sons of Sceva ran out of that house with their tails between their legs, wounded on top of it all. Church, we have to know who we are and we have to know who our God is. This is our instruction manual. Amen. This is our instruction manual. This is where we learn who we are. This is where we learn how to use our spiritual weapons against the enemy. This is where we learn how to win in a fight. This is where we get the wisdom. This is where we get the guidelines. This is where we're shown how to fight. Amen. And one of those accounts is David and Goliath. We're all familiar with David and Goliath. David, youngest son of Jesse, the ruddy looking little boy that was sent out to the fields, not really valued very much, not really taken seriously at all, sent out to the fields to mind the sheep. And he was sent out to the fields to mind the sheep, but his brothers were sent to the battlefield. His brothers were on the front line where the Israelites were fighting against the Philistines. And the Israelites weren't doing very well because the Philistines had a giant huge guy called Goliath and he was shouting and threatening the Israelites and they were terrified of him but one day Jesse called David in from the fields to take lunch to his brothers on the front line and he just ordered him take the lunch see how the boys are doing and come back but of course when David got there as was he got there to give the lunch to his brothers Goliath was out shouting his threats and everything as he did all the time every day and he was there when that happened and he was like 
what's going on here? So we're going to take it up in 1 Samuel 17. David decides to take on Goliath because we have to remember that David knew who he was. And David takes on Goliath in verse 40. Then he took his staff in his hand and he chose for himself five smooth stones from the brook and put them in a shepherd's bag in a pouch which he had and he was and his sling was in his hand and he drew near to the Philistine verse 41 so the Philistine came and began drawing near to David and the man who bore the shield went before him and when the Philistine looked about and saw David he disdained him for he was only a youth ruddy and good looking don't you love that word Goliath disdained David he did not like David David was just a youth why are you sending this little boy up against me? He didn't think David was worthy of respect. Newsflash. The enemy doesn't think you are either. He doesn't think you're worthy of respect either. He doesn't respect us, but you know what? It doesn't matter. Verse 43. So the Philistine said to David, Am I a dog that you come with me, come against me with sticks? And the Philistines cursed David by his gods. And the Philistines said to David, Come to me, and I will give your flesh to the birds of the air and beasts of the field. The enemy always appears big and insurmountable. Amen. He shouts loud and he's intimidating. But our God is bigger. He'll always come at us with threatening words, but our God is bigger. First Samuel 17 and verse 44 says, Come on, said the Philistine, I'll make roadkill of you for the buzzards. I'll turn you into a tasty morsel for the field mice. That's funny because you see, Goliath didn't know who he was dealing with here. Then David said to the Philistine, You come to me with a sword and a spear and with a javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. Goliath may not know known who David was, but David knew who he was. Verse 46, then this day the Lord will deliver you into my hand and I will strike you and take your head from you. And this day I will give the carcasses of the camp of the Philistine to the birds of the air and the wild beasts of the earth. And all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. Then all this assembly shall know that the Lord does not save with sword and spear for the battle is the Lord's. And he will give you into your hands. So it was when the Philistines arose and came and drew near to, David, to meet David that David hurried and ran toward the army to meet the Philistine. Then David put his hand in his bag and took out a stone and he slung it and struck the Philistine in his forehead so that the stone sank into his forehead and he fell on his face to the earth. The battle is the Lord's. Don't you just love that? The battle is the Lord's. The battle is the Lord. And the Lord is your Abba Daddy. We're not in this on our own. It is so important to remember who you are, church. You are not in this on your own. He is your daddy. He is your Abba Father. And the battle is his. David knew he wasn't facing Goliath on his own. And it's the same with us. We need to know that we are his children. We are his children. He cares about us. He cares about everything that concerns us. We have to realize that we are not on our own in this. God is with us. You know, if you receive a bad doctor's report, you're not on your own. You know, if you're about to lose your house, you're not on your own. If your marriage is in trouble or it's not how it should be, you're not on your own. In 2020, you're not on your own. We need to fight. Amen. we need to fight. We need to be vigilant. We need to be prepared. We need to know who we are. And my last point is today is we need to pray. We need to pray. We're not on our own. God is there willing and ready to help. All we have to do is ask. Ask and you shall receive, the Bible says. But the problem is that too many, many of us don't ask. We try to do it on our own. We try to struggle through in our own steam. Or we just accept the status quo and this is the way it is now. But that's not how we should live, amen? We need to ask. We need to pray. We need to live our lives through prayer. We need to fight those battles through prayer. You know, prayer is a solemn request for help or expression of thanks to be addressed to God. We need to pray. We need to pray. We need to give our issues to God in prayer. We need to know who we are as children of the Most High God. And we need to go to him in prayer. You have not because you ask not. Philippians 4, 6 says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. 
Get away from the distractions if you have to. Find a place that's just you and God. God is everywhere, so your secret place can be anywhere. That's just a good thing. Some place where you won't be distracted. God won't ever get distracted, but unfortunately, we as humans do. We get distracted so easily, so easily. Find somewhere. If you have a closet, go pray in the closet. You know, if you have a back garden, go pray in the back garden. If your car is your secret place, if your car is where you can be alone, pray in the car. It doesn't matter where you pray. Just pray. Amen. Pray. Go out in the field. Go into the shed. Find somewhere and pray. We need to pray and we need to be specific in our prayers. If your marriage is in trouble, well then name your spouse. You need help with. Name the issues that you both face. And ask God to help you. Ask him to help you. Ask him to help you be more understanding. Ask him to help you to, to be more loving. Whatever it is you need. Have confidence in your prayer as well. Be specific, but have confidence. Your pray, pray confidently. Pray knowing that when you ask God to do this thing, he is going to do it. Once you ask God according to his will, he will do it. Amen. We need to have the attitude in prayer. Why wouldn't God help me? Why wouldn't God answer my prayer? Once we're praying the will of God, God will answer. Have confidence on your, in your prayer. He's on your side. He wants to help. He wants to see you blessed. Remember that. God wants to see you blessed. He wants to see you healthy. He wants to see you prosperous. He wants to see you happy. He wants to see you content. Be confident that he has the power to do it. Just like David, this day the Lord will deliver you into my hands. You know, just like most people, I suppose, during this lockdown, we've been watching lots of movies at home. And Rebecca has uh, decided to watch the superhero movies through from beginning to end in order. So uh, we were watching The Hulk. Uh, the Incredible Hulk one night recently and you know as we watched it it's the usual you know superhero movie and um, I'm sure you know the whole story to the Hulk Bruce Banner is a scientist and his they have an accident in a lab and his blood ends up contaminated with gamma red, red radiation and this causes him huge issues this causes him to turn into this big angry green guy when he gets angry and the Hulk actually is my favorite I love the Hulk. He's my favorite of all the superheroes. He's intelligent. He's strong. You know, he's fit. He can lift anything. He can lift anyone. He can take out anything. He smashes everything. He just has great fun. And But at the end of the movie, the Hulk, we were watching the other evening. At the end of the movie, um, it turns out, no spoiler alert, <laughs> spoiler alert here then, okay. He, at the end of the movie, they end up injecting stuff into another guy, a soldier who's actually trying to take out the Hulk. So he ends up becoming this big green ugly thing. Now he's uglier than the Hulk and he's he he seems stronger and more powerful. But the end fight scene is this guy standing in the middle of the street. And of course they send in the Hulk. The so other soldiers have tried to take him out. It's not possible. So they send in the Hulk to take him out. And the thing about it is, as he was standing in the street and then the Hulk arrives at the other end of the street, we were watching this and straight away I looked at the other guy and I said to the TV, ha, huh, the Hulk is going to kick your butt. And, you know, we laughed over that and we were watching it. But as I sat there watching the fight scene, I really felt convicted because I, I knew beyond a shadow of a doubt that the Hulk was going to win this fight. I knew beyond the shadow of a doubt that the Hulk was going to overcome this other guy. I knew the Hulk could beat this guy. There was no doubt about it. And I felt like God was reminding me as I sat there, I'm your Hulk. <laughs> I'm your Hulk. Do you have that confidence in me? Do you know that I'm fighting your corner? Do you know that I'm stronger than your enemy? Do you know that the victory is ours? And you know, I know that's TV. I know that's a movie. I know it's superhero children stuff. But you know what? We need to have more confidence in our God than we do in our superheroes. God has it. He doesn't lose fights. Amen. Nowhere in the Bible does it say that God lost any battle. You look in the Old Testament, you look in the New Testament. God doesn't lose battles. Amen. The enemy put Jesus on a cross 
He put him on a cross and then he put him in a tomb. And Jesus walked out of that tomb. Jesus walked out of that tomb. Jesus won the battle. He won the battle for us. He won the fight so that we too could have the victory. We need to be persistent, guys. We need to dig in our heels. We are in a fight. There is no doubt about it. We will probably always be fighting. But you know what? The victory is ours. The victory is ours. Remember, the battle is the Lord's. Remember, be vigilant. Be prepared. Know who you are and pray. Don't let the enemy have his way. Do not let the enemy have his way in your life. Pray and then be strong. Tell the enemy to back off. Prayer will give you the strength to do that. It will give you the strength and the confidence that you need to hold the enemy back. It will give you the strength and the confidence you need to tell the enemy to take his hold off your family. Take his hold off your health. Take his hold off your finances. Take his hold off your relationships. Just like David let out the stone and let it fly, we need to pray and declare and then relax and know that God is in control. We will win this fight. Guys, wasn't that such a great message? You know, we really are in a fight right now and it's so good to be reminded of. Hey, if you felt led to give this morning, please follow the link in the comments below or check out our website, alivechurch.ie forward slash give. We love you guys. Thanks again for joining us this morning. Stay safe and we'll see you next week.